All right, settle in. Five will enter. Only one can triumph. No, I am not talking about a Royal Rumble. It's Canada Reads time. Today on the podcast, it's the moment. The five Canada Reads contestants are here. You're going to get to meet them and hear about their books. I'm Alameen Abdul Mahmoud. This is Commotion. All right, so right now, gathered around the commotion table, I'm joined by a secret group of celebrities from many corners of this country. They will be this year's champions on Canada Reads, CBC's annual book debate. One by one, each celebrity is going to reveal themselves and the book that they're bringing to the battle. So when you're listening to this, get out your pen, get your library holds ready, because these are the five books that everyone is going to be reading and talking about over the next few months. Let's get right into it. Okay, the theme of Canada Reads this year is one book to carry us forward. One of the celebrities is, is kind of laughing at me, and I don't really know why. We're going to talk about that in just a minute. But here's how this is going to work, okay? I have this Canada Reads bell with me. One by one, you're going to identify yourselves, and then you'll have 30 seconds to tell us why the book that you're championing is the one to carry us forward. All right, everybody ready? Don't say anything. Our first celebrity panelist knows a lot about the power of books. Not only is this Montrealer a voracious reader, she's one of this country's finest writers. Her debut novel won Canada Reads in 2007 when it was defended by the weaker than frontman John K. Sampson. But today she's stepping into the great Canadian book debate herself. Panelists, reveal yourself. It's me. It's Heather O'Neill. Heather, I'm so happy that you're here. Listen, what book are you bringing to Canada Reads? I am going to be defending The Future by Catherine LaRue, translated by Susan Oriou. Catherine LaRue, a very celebrated French-Canadian writer. Heather, I'm going to put 30 seconds on the clock. This is your first opening argument for the debate. Why do you stand behind this book? One, it takes place in a post-apocalyptic Detroit where everyone speaks French, so super cool. Two, it is the most magical response to the Lord of the Flies. You're going to meet a group of feral, murderous children whose meditations on life are so gorgeous and absurd and perverse that they are poetry. And this wild group of children show us a model for a new society where everyone's dream life is equally important. You made the clock. I'm so impressed. (laughs) Heather, our first book and first champion has been revealed. Heather O'Neill is Champion of the Future by Catherine LaRue, translated by Susan Orio. All right, four more champions and books to go. Our next panelist is a young actor from Fort McMurray, Alberta. She was named a rising star by the Toronto International Film Festival and CBC Arts. You can catch her alongside Evan Rachel Wood and Devery Jacobs in the upcoming film Backspot. Panelist, introduce yourself. Hello. I'm Kudakwashi Rutendo. Hey! Thank you. (laughs) Kudakwashi, welcome to Commotion. What book are you bringing to Canada Reads? I am bringing Shut Up, You're Pretty by Taya Mutonji. All right. Shut Up, You're Pretty, Taya Mutonji. Kudakwashi, it is time to hear your opening argument. I'm going to put 30 seconds on the clock. Why is this the book that Canada should read? Shut Up, You're Pretty is a compilation of short stories centered on Loli, a black Congolese immigrant to Toronto over 13 years. And in the last few years, we as people have overcome a pandemic, been faced with immeasurable global and humanitarian disasters, yet we admirably looked forward. Within Shut Up, You're Pretty is the promise of hope and future, not in spite of a heavy past, but because of it. At once feminist, unapologetic, and potent, Shut Up, You're Pretty presents the opportunity to reconcile what we've been carrying at a time when it couldn't be more needed. This is one book to carry us forward through negotiating our past. I'm I'm just so impressed that both of you guys are making your time. I know, me too. I saw you over there. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Rotendo, you are championing Shut Up, You're Pretty by Tam Matanji. That is the second book. Our champion has been revealed. Heather, how are you feeling about that argument now that you just heard that? It's good. It's good. I'm impressed. <laughs> <laughs> I, I heard Heather's and I was like, oh, my goodness. I heard actually like point by point answers the question. I was like, can I re- rewrite it like in a second? The I answer know, was that, no. That's why I was glad I was going first because then I was like, by the time you I get to the end, I'll, I'll just be like I'll, rewriting some nonsensical thing, self-doubting myself. I, I think you did great. Oh, we're going to keep it moving. Okay. Our next celebrity guest is an athlete and a broadcaster from Saskatoon. He made history as the first indigenous man to represent Canada internationally on the men's volleyball team. He'll be joining the CBC broadcast team for the Paris Olympics this summer. Panelists, introduce yourself. 
boy, DS in the lab. I'm sorry if I peeked. We might want to turn the levels down. It's Dallas Sunias. Ooh. Dallas Sunias. First of all, we can't turn the levels down. We are live right now. Yeah, so I, we, we peaked. It's done. Yeah. It's happening. Dallas, welcome to the show. What book are you bringing? I have brought Bad Cree by Jessica Johns. All right. Jessica Johns' debut novel, Bad Cree. You know the drill. 30 seconds on the clock. Why is this the book that Canada should read? Okay, I'm more of a numbers guy. I'm just going to, hey, Siri, <laughs> set a 30-second. Outrageous. This is the most outrageous well, thing that's ever happened on this show. Even, okay, Siri's not listening. Okay. From the <clears throat> <clears throat> judges. <clears throat> excuse me. This man <clears throat> is trying to I'm obfuscate. some water very quick. Um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> Dallas. If you read one book this year, <laughs> let it be bad, Cree. First of all, you're out of time. You knew this. But second of all, we talked about this yesterday. Your strategy is not to reveal anything about your strategy. Or is it, do I have nothing to reveal? Oh, wow. Is that what we'll it never is? know. We'll, we'll never know. We'll Either find out in a couple months. Oh, yeah. <laughs> really? I was going to say, did that like work, Kudakwashi? Are you kind of, of a little more afraid of this now? Very confident. You can't plan for crazy. Okay. You know well, <laughs> wow. All right. I can't wait to see what happens with this. Okay. Our third champion, Dallas Sunias, representing Bad Cree by Jessica Johns. He's not telling you why he's representing that book right now. <laughs> Heather, Kudakwashi, did that put the fear in your heart? Or Heather's like, no, I got this. I'm, I'm feeling okay. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I did not change my, I didn't want to change my script after hearing that. <laughs> Our next mystery guest is seasoned debater and advocate. He served three terms as the mayor of Calgary. He won the World Mayor Prize in 2014. Panelist, who are you? I am someone who is way out of his league in this room <laughs> Get right out of here. now. I'm Nye Nenshi. Nye Nenshi, welcome to the show. Nyd, what book have you selected for Canada Reads? I have selected this most beautiful book, the debut novel by Christina Wong with illustrations by Daniel Innes. It's called Denison Avenue. All right. Let's talk about Denison Avenue. You, we got 30 seconds on the clock. Why do you think Canadians should be reading this book? The magnificent Denison Avenue will tell you a story you've never heard before about people you think you know in your neighborhood. It will change you. It will change how you look at people on the bus and on the street. It will change how you live your life. Christina Wong is going to tear your heart out and stomp on it and then hand it back to you, a little bandaged, a little bruised, but filled with empathy and filled with hope. And empathy and hope are what are going to carry us forward. First of all, beautiful description. Second of all, uh, you've just revealed your entire card to Dallas. <laughs> We started right? sitting here over here trying to pretend like he's all mysterious and stuff. I Dallas? was listening and I was thinking, man, I probably should have said exactly that. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Our final, our final panelist lives in Toronto. She's a force in the world of fashion as a content creator and a model. She's partnered with the likes of Valentino, Uniqlo, Canada Goose, and more. Panelist, who are you? Hello, Canada. This is Myrian Unja. Hey! Wow. Welcome, hey. Myrian. <laughs> Myrian, what book have you brought us to Champion for Canada Reads? I am bringing you Meet Me at the Lake by Carly Fortune. All right. Meet Me at the Lake, best-selling romance novel by Carly Fortune. It is your turn in the hot seat. Pal, you got 30 seconds to convince the nation to read this book. Go. Meet Me at the Lake is a complex and beautifully written romance novel. It features a full cast of richly developed characters as they navigate their way through romantic love, familial love, and the self-love that comes from aligning with your passions and purpose. The characters' experiences provide a roadmap for what it means to have compassion, show grace, be selfless, and find your way home. It inspires and empowers us to reflect on our own lives and values, to see how the choices we make... Ooh, honey. Okay. <laughs> I mean, you can finish your sentence, you okay, know? Well, thank you. <laughs> see how the choices we make bring us closer to our own happily ever after. That's a beautiful description. Great. All right. Myrian, Myrian Enja <laughs> will champion Meet Me the Lake by... Carly Fortune. That's the fifth and final book of this Canada Reads shortlist this year. Congratulations to all of you. Give yourselves a round of applause. Hooray. How are you feeling? <laughs> Hello. Welcome to the show. All right. If folks are listening, my name is Alameen Abdul Mahmoud, and this show you listen to is Commotion. We just revealed the lineup of Canada Reads 2024. One more, one more time this year. This year's titles are The Future by Catherine LaRue, translated by Susan Orio, Shut Up Your Pretty by Teo Matonje, Bad Cree, Jessica Johns, Denison Avenue, Christina Wong and Daniel Innes, and Meet Me at the Lake, Carly Fortune. That's five books that you got to add to your reading list right now. 
You know, every year we hear from the Canary's audience about how the competition opened new doors for them, you know, opened new books, introduced them to new books that they haven't read before. And it makes me think of this conversation that we had with the legendary YA author Jacqueline Woodson. We were talking about children's literature, but I still think it applies to this and all adults reading. Take a listen to this. I always talk about Dr. Rudine Sims Bishop, who talks about the importance of kids needing both mirrors and windows in their literature, mirrors so that they see reflections of themselves so that they don't feel invisible outside in the bigger world, and windows so that they see other ways of being. So when you guys get out of the studio, you're going to start scheming, you're going to start planning for your approach for canneries. But before you do that, let's take a moment in this studio here and say, you know, I want to ask each of you, was your book a window or a mirror for you? Heather, I'll start with you. Oh, interesting. Um, obviously, I mean, it's hard to do a binary like that because it's a bit of both. Mm. And what I liked in it was that it reflected so much about children who were abused and run away and you know, abandoned by their parents, particularly their mothers. So that brought a lot of um, recognition from my own biography. Mm. And so that really, um, really touched me. But then it was a window in that she offers, um, Lahu offers a new vision of how we can rebuild society and communities and how we've lost communities. And mm. so it's this, you know, totally feral, um, decrepit, cr- crime-ridden community. But these little children, the way they work together, even though, you know, they're always fighting and weeping and, and yeah. you know, ca- calling each other names and stuff, are able to realize that they each have a little function in the world. And it's sort of about rebuilding. And also, as you're watching them communicate, Catherine LaRue, who's just wonderful with imagery and metaphor, she's describing the 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 wild flowers of the park just breaking through the the cement pavement mm. so that it's this parallel of rebirth and regrowth so um so for me that was this window that made it a, a very even though you know you think it's a dystopian it's incredibly full of hope mm-hmm. and a way out beautiful answer good question what about you i really agree with what heather said you know um reading this book for me one of the, like it, it's it's both it kind of there's it's more than it goes beyond the binary of just being a window or a mirror um i chose it because i saw myself reflected and depicted in a way that i'd craved my entire life you mm. know um i've been an avid reader my entire life and growing up one of like the my biggest lamentations or the one of my like something that was really hard on me was the fact i never saw myself in anything and you don't really know the kind of toll that has until that in conjunction with how you're kind of treated and socially yeah. makes your self-worth and of yourself and just how you view yourself completely skewed. Um, so reading this, I saw parts of myself affirmed that I've never seen in literature before and that I'd craved my entire life. And it was it brought along a heaviness of finally being able to be seen. And it was just so cathartic for me. Yeah. Um, but also because the book encompasses so many different life experiences, you know, it was also a window into all these other different things that I've never experienced that mm. I got to witness through Little Lee, who was this dynamic, amazing character. Um, and so, yeah, it was, it was a bit of both. It was wondrous, <laughs> wondrously a bit of both. I, I like it when a book uh, can serve as an answer to that craving. The idea yeah, that you crave yeah. that, you know, um, representation of yourself, that it, idea of like, hey, I see myself in this that can change your entire relationship it to a text, truly right? did it was yeah. why i picked it uh dallas what about you is this more of a window is this more of a of a mirror for you well same deal it's yeah. it's both yeah the the author jessica johns she describes herself as a nehiao anti i'm nehiao the mm. story is a nehiao story so it's i feel i felt like i had a shorthand with the characters and the author mm. just listening to how she describes and writes about her family dynamic like you immediately sort of understood. I'm there. I'm yeah. right there with her. So that mm-hmm. was, for me personally, that was super lucky. Yeah, It's a window because it's a horror thing. I'm not a horror guy. Mm. You know, uh, a, a lot of it. It does kind of a roller coaster move where there's a lot of slow burn about the family dynamic. Mm. Um, and then it just grabs you and puts you in a totally different world. And she's so good at describing this 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 fantasy horror situation that you feel like you're right there. Mm-hmm. So it's both. Beautiful. 
Now, had you, I, I know from our conversations, you sort of insisted about a book um, about cities and about mm -hmm. urbanism because you're so passionate about it. In terms of this book, how would you contextualize it? Well, you know, this is a beautiful question. Mm. And the reason I came to this panel, and you'll hear me talk about this a lot in March, is because I'm, I'm one of those people, like so many of us, who has lost room for books in their lives. Mm. Screens have taken over, work has taken over, and I've really been trying to carve out time to read. And what spoke to me about this book and why your question is so great is that it is a window that should be a mirror. Hmm. So this will tell you a story, as I said, about someone, a story you haven't heard about people you think you know. It's about immigrants. It's about elderly people in our community and the isolation of seniors. Um, the woman, the protagonist, has lived in Toronto since 1958 but she's not part of the Toronto story mm. that most people will think about when they think about what is a city. And so for me, it's a window into a life of so many of our neighbors. But at the end, you should be thinking that's actually a story about me. That's a really beautiful way to put it. Myrian, last word to you. Was your book a window? Was it a mirror? So at the risk of sounding redundant. <laughs> that's okay. I mean, I, I think Heather has introduced this. This is what happens that, when you're the last one. That's all right. That's all right. <laughs> but I, but I'm going to raise you. Not only was it a mirror and a window, but I also saw it as a blueprint. And I think that's the mm. beauty of this book because there's aspects of it and people who are from Toronto will, will find it to be a mirror because there's so many references and nostalgic moments that occur. And you can say, I've done that. I've experienced that. I've lived that. And you really feel like you're right in there with the characters because you integrate your own memories and feelings that it inspires. But then, you know, we juxtapose that location with Cottage Country, for instance. And that's something where it's a it's a window for me because I'm not for, as familiar with that world. You know, even the characters' lives and what they've been through, their experiences, some of them I relate to so profoundly. And I'm like, this is me. I've had this exact moment. And others... They're, you know, excitedly unfamiliar. And mm. I think that that's beautiful. And lastly, I think where it comes into being a blueprint is that we look at, you know, some of the circumstances that the characters are all experiencing. And I think one thing that brings them all together is that none of their lives turn out quite as they would have anticipated or wanted. And yet we have to see them you know, maneuver and navigate through that. And that's where it becomes a blueprint because it helps to show us, hey, even if I thought my life was in order and going to go in one direction and, and it doesn't, you know, how do I have the courage to, to make a new way and to mm. carry forward? And we get to watch, you know, the characters do that. And it kind of, you know, inspires us to say, you know, maybe I can be courageous and, and I can reshape my life in a way that's still going to lead me to my happily ever after. I, I'm now so excited about this season of Canada Reads. I just want to say thank you to all of you for being here. You guys are terrific. Good yeah. luck in March. Thank you again for your time. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thank you for having us. Of course. All right. Your Canada Reads 2024 champions are Heather O'Neill, Kuda Kwasha Rotendo, Dallas Sunius, Nahid Nenji, and Marian Unja. Ali Hassan will host a debate live from March 4th to the 7th. On Friday, March 8th, the commotion will speak to the winner. One of you <laughs> will be back at the stable. I can't say who yet. All right. You can read more about each of the books at cbc.ca slash Canada Reads. Hey, so 11 days into 2024 and one of the biggest viral stories we've had so far has been courtesy of one man, Cat Williams. It seems to me, Kat, that you had a lot to get off your chest. No, no. You wanted to set I the record straight. They, if you give the, a liar a platform to lie, then I, I'm not being messy by saying, hold on, that never happened. It's untrue. And there are hundreds of witnesses for each thing I'm saying. That is Cat Williams, uh, one of the biggest comedians in the world. You can check Netflix for a bunch of his specials. He's been around for a long time. Cat had a bone to pick with several of his high-profile comedy peers. I'm talking about people like Kevin Hart or Steve Harvey or Tiffany Haddish or Cedric the Entertainer, just to name a few. Cat Williams went on the popular podcast Club Shay, Shay Shay that's hosted by the popular Football Hall of Famer turned media personality Shannon Sharp. And Cat Williams just went off. Okay, that interview is like three hours long. It now has over 35 million views. I spoke to comedian, podcaster, and commotion regular Ashley Ray about this Cat Williams controversy and why it's such a big deal in the comedy world. 
Here's just a bit of our chat where Ashley explains how it all started. It all started when Cedric the Entertainer went on Club Shay Shay yes. and was kind of asked about Kat and mentioned, you know, like, you know, I've always supported Kat, tried to help him out. You know, he won the Cedric the Entertainer Comedian Award like decades ago. Uh, and, you know, but, but was kind of doing the same song of, but he gets in his own way, da, da, da. Mm-hmm. So, you know, that's why he he isn't as big as he could be, you know, like you don't see him up here with me and Steve Harvey. Yeah. And Kat clearly wanted to clear the air on that because his point was just, I don't want to be Cedric or Steve Harvey. I am not trying to host Family Feud. Uh, <laughs> and really, it was showcasing that he does have this place in in comedy that they don't want to really admit. Mm-hmm. Uh, you want Cat Williams' approval. I, you know it hurt every single comedian he called out because they all <laughs> responded. Every single one was like, no, 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 that's not what really happened. Every single one from <laughs> Tiffany Haddish to Kevin Hart to Ludacris. Ludacris put out a whole little rap that didn't even deny what Cat Williams said, but was just like, I have a jet, though. <laughs> so... <laughs> You know, it, it was him wanting to, I think, showcase his place uh, and really also say, I'm not getting in my way. Look at you guys stealing my jokes. Yes. You got where you are because of my work. So also a big part of it was, you know, Cedric or Kat bringing up the fact that Steve and Cedric had stolen jokes from him. You know what? As you mentioned that, it is time to hear this clip. 1998, I'm doing this joke. It's on Comic View. Cedric comes to the comedy store. He watches me in the audience. He comes backstage. He tells me what a great job I did and how much he loves the joke. Two years later, he's doing that as his last joke on the Kings of Comedy. And he's doing it verbatim. He's just changed my car into a spaceship. Ashley, what was your, yeah. what was your reaction to that moment? I mean, he was absolutely right. So, I, again, I just love that he laid it all out in a way that comedians aren't expected to do, really. It, it's a, it goes against the code, against the rules. You don't talk about your fellow comics that way. Mm. And Kat did not care. A bit of my conversation with comedian and podcaster Ashley Ray about this whole Cat Williams controversy. That man is a talk of the internet this week. You can catch my entire chat with Ashley right now as a bonus podcast in our podcast feed. And that is it for the podcast today. Hey, listen, remember, you can listen to any episode of the show anytime you like, wherever you get your podcasts. My name is Alameen Abdul Mahmoud. I've had a delight, a delightful time being here with you today. I'm going to be here tomorrow. If you're around, I think you should put it in your calendar. I think we should do this again tomorrow. What do you say? See you then. See you then.